Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Since the last episode, I've been um, goofing around a little bit here in the base. And I added more drills to coal because I was noticing that some of the smelting lines were not getting enough. So I put more mining drills on coal. Uh, we now have, let's see, 31 miners. So it's a little bit more than we need for one full belt. Um, so I decided to run two belts. Um, this little contraption here is what you would call a lane balancer. Since I have all these drills uh, loading on one side of the belt here, you could end up with one side of the belt backing up and the other one not having much on it. And that's not the best situation for getting maximum throughput. So, um, so I run it through this lane balancer and basically what it does is it just, it just splits it and will load half of it on one side of the belt and half of it on the other side of the belt. So that way you can always get both sides of the belt evenly loaded. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, so I'm running two belts. Um, these smelting lines are pulling from the top belt. This is pulling from the top belt. That's pulling from the top belt. Uh, then I get over here and I pull from the bottom belt for my stone. And then over here, this prioritizes my power line. And then whatever's left over will continue on onto the main bus and go over to the military science area where we're making grenades. Um, I also had to replace a radar. I think I think maybe my original radar over in this area got destroyed by biters or something. Uh, so now we can see all this. Now one thing I'm concerned about is that my coal supply is is running low. Iron is running low too, but I've got more close by. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. I'm more concerned about iron or about coal because I still don't see any more coal on the map. <laughs> And uh, that could be a problem if we run out of coal, because then we'll have no power. So, uh, one thing we can do here is we can set up another radar. So that we can scan more quickly. Cliff explosive production is coming along nicely. We've got 51 of them now, so that'll keep us uh, with a clear path for construction. So what I'm going to do, oh, you know what, this is a good time to use the car, I suppose. I'll put the car in my hot bar. We'll set that there, we'll give it some fuel, press enter to jump in. And enter to get out. And I'll put this other radar right here so that we can start scanning more in this area. Actually, you know what, let's, uh, let's take that farther. All right, I think it might be easier if I jump out of the car at this point. So I'm gonna have to navigate these cliffs. Okay, looks like the research queue is done, so we'll need to queue up some more. All right, so I'll put the radar down right here. And let's make some more wall. I'm gonna put a couple of turrets. Give those each a half a stack of ammo. And then I'll wall the whole thing in. Because biters do seem to be attracted to radar. You know, and that's not a terribly, um, terribly effective long-term defensive setup, but 
you know, if it starts getting a lot of attacks, then we'll know that we need to go fortify it or eliminate some biter nests or whatever. Just so it can continue to survive while we go and take care of the situation. Okay. So let's add some more research to the queue. Um, night vision, belt immunity, personal battery, all these researchers that have the little icon of the guy, these are all, um, these are all for power armor. Uh, we don't have power armor made yet. I actually, I'm not sure if we can make it. No, we're going to need red circuits. So we can't use it yet. Um, so let's do, let's do our next weapon upgrades first. And then we'll just queue up all this other stuff. I think I missed one. There we go. And then uh, we can do combat robotics as well, which allows you to make little drones and capsules and things like that. I don't often use those items, but uh, we can maybe demonstrate a few of them. Okay, and then there's also uh, a rocket launcher. Actually, let's get the rocket launcher. Uh, that's useful for taking out bases, and it uses explosives, which we're already making. Um, so as a matter of fact, let's... Let's see. Let's put explosives in a chest so that we can accumulate a few. How can I do this? No. Well, yeah, here's what we can do. We can just put every other one into a chest. We'll accumulate a stack. No, I don't want to do that because this is waiting for... This is the slow part of the process, isn't it? Um... Maybe I can just set up another one making explosives. Since I am making... Whoops. I am making sulfur fast enough that I could have two factories making explosives. fact, if I'm going to have two making explosives, then I could feed some more into there, but no, we'll leave it like this for now. Ah, don't forget the coal. There we go. Okay, and let's grab more cliff explosives while I'm at it. Uh, we've pretty much taken out all the cliffs that are in the way of our bus. There's a few left, so we can clear these up. Okay, and now our cliff problem is pretty much solved. Looks like there's another one down here. Okay. Great. Uh, and as you can see, I've cleared out some trees as well. Okay, so what I want to do today, I'm going to leave some extra room this time. I want to start building what's commonly known in the biz as a mall, uh, or a supply depot, or... Anyway, we're going to make, we're going to make all the items that we're using to build the factory. So things like inserters, gears, belts, uh, assembly machines, that sort of stuff. Um, and since I'm going to start doing that automatically, um, that means I'm not going to have to rely on this anymore for inserters and, and 
belts. So I'm going to stop queuing them over here. I'll just remove the chests. That'll be good enough. And hopefully I gave myself enough to <laughs> at least get that part of the job done. Okay, so the way this works is uh, we're going to have a series of belts bringing up things like iron plate, copper plate, steel, um, all this sort of stuff. And uh, in the inside, we're going to have a few machines making gear wheels because many, many, many of the items that we use require gear wheels. So the first thing I'll do, uh, leave a space there and then put down five factories and then take out those two. Okay, and these are going to make gear wheels. And then uh, make another, make a space of three and do the same thing yet again. And those are also gonna make gear wheels. Okay, um, I, I kind of joke around sometimes that the uh, that the mall or the supply factory is kind of like, uh, it's just basically a giant gear factory because uh, <laughs> the majority of what we're going to be making here are gear wheels to feed everything else. Okay, and then the way this works is uh, we're going we're gonna to make the gear wheels and then down the center we'll have two belts full of gear wheels. And then we're basically going to be following this pattern with our other factories that are going to make all the stuff that we need. And then we'll have ingredients on both sides that we can pull in and gears running down the middle and that way we'll have easy access to most of the common ingredients that we need to fabricate stuff for the factory. Okay, so let's get this started. Um, of course we're going to need iron plate as our primary ingredient and we'll run iron plate on both sides. Let me uh, let me craft a few of these things. Okay, so, oops, there we go, iron plate one, and this will be iron plate two. Okay, and then once again, I'm going to do my shift up with the... Splitters. Okay. And then once we get up here, we're just going to feed the iron plate across so that the gear wheels have access. Actually, you know what, let's start making medium electric poles. And I'm going to start to use those instead of, instead of small electric poles from now on. That helps a lot because then you can, you can cover more area with fewer poles. As you can see there, we can basically cover all that with two power poles. All right, and we'll throw in a couple lights. And now we got a little gear factory. Okay. Let's craft some more assembly machines while we're at it. Um, yeah. Okay. So first thing I would like to make are yellow belts and undergrounds and splitters, okay? Now, the underground belts and the splitters both take transport belts as an ingredient. 
So in this case, it's going to make sense for us to put the belt in the center. And then we can do, uh, we can do underground belts on one side and we can do splitters on the other side. Okay. And that way we're going to be able to feed those like this with some long inserters. Okay. Now in order to do that, we'll have to use an underground belt to get our gears through. That's no problem. Let's bring this iron up a bit. Okay. And then this takes iron plate, of course, this takes iron plate and this also takes iron plate. So we'll repeat this pattern of bringing over iron plate like we did before with the gears. And I do it like this just so that this is going to pull evenly from both sides like so. Let's see, where do I want to put those? Yeah, maybe I should put, maybe I should just put a grid of power poles like in the middle like that. That seems like a good idea. Okay, and then we will also put a chest there. And uh, let's get a little more aggressive. Let's go for five stacks. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Okay, so maybe that's not the best pattern for the poles. Um, all right, let's do it like this. And then the next one is going to be there. Yeah. So we'll do bottom right corner is where we put the power poles. Okay. So now we're making belts for our own personal use. And then we're also making belts for the undergrounds and the splitters. Okay. And then let's make some more chests. Um, Hmm. Yeah, and actually, you know what, uh, from this point forward, we, we should start making steel chests instead of iron chests. Um, the reason for that is that iron chests are not recyclable. Um, you can't, you can't use them for anything else. Steel chests have a greater capacity and while they are a lot more expensive because they take eight steel plates, you'll see that when we get into robotics, we get access to these uh, robotics or logistic system chests, and those use steel chests as an ingredient. So later on, when we start replacing chests with steel chests, we'll be able to recycle the steel chests to make them into logistics chests. So let me try to remember to do that. I mean, I'll use the rest of the iron chests that I have, but from now on, let's try to remember to make steel chests instead. Okay, and then we can load this. I'll do like two stacks of undergrounds. That's going to need iron plate as well. So let's load that in. This also needs iron plate. And then this one needs green circuits. Okay, so we need to get a belt of green circuits run in there. So let's go ahead and extend the green circuit bus. Oops. Now in this case, um, typically what I'll do is I'll just feed it half a belt. Um, because later on when we have red circuits, I'm going to load the other half of the belt with red circuits. Okay. Let's grab the undergrounds so we don't have to handcraft those anymore, which is quite the luxury. Okay. So let's see there. Okay, so I'm just going to load half the belt, so I'll put it like that, and then uh, I'll use this belt to force it to side load, and then later on we can just feed the red circuits directly into there. Okay, and then I'll put that 
that splitter there. Run the circuits over. There we go. We'll limit this output to two stacks. Thus and so. And let's make more lamps. And we'll put one there. And we'll put one there. Okay. And then we just jump across with the iron plates. Okay. Now, um, and okay. Yeah, we're all set. Now, in Factorio, there are three different varieties of belts. The yellow ones we've been using up until now. We also now have the, have the ability to make the red variety, which are twice as fast, 30 items per second. Um, the higher level underground belts also span a longer distance. So yellow underground belts go five tiles, reds go seven tiles, and then later on we'll get access to blue, which we haven't researched yet, but uh, that one will go nine tiles. And the blue belts are, you guessed it, three times faster than yellow belts. So each tier goes up 15 items per second. Um, now, what you'll see here is that uh, red belts use yellow belts as ingredients. Red undergrounds use yellow undergrounds as ingredients. And red splitters use yellow splitters as ingredients. Okay, so that means that it makes a lot of sense to put red belt production right here because then we can feed those items directly in, add the other ingredients that they need, and then we're making red belts. Okay, so this will be red undergrounds, this will be red belts, and this will be red splitters. And we can actually start making all of those already. Um, but I think I'm going to hold off a little bit because these use a lot of iron. Like you can see one pair of underground red belts uses the equivalent of 97 and a half iron plates versus one yellow belt which uses 17 and a half. Uh, the splitters, 46 iron plates and 22 and a half copper plates. So they're rather expensive and we don't have, we don't yet have enough ore to really scale up our production terribly high right now. So I'm going to hold off and especially the coal. Speaking of that, um, since we are doing a little bit of petroleum production here, one thing we can do to help stretch our coal supply farther is to start making solid fuel from this petroleum. put a pipe there no it won't let me because then it'll connect with this one and then I'll have petroleum and water in the same pipe that's a no-no so let's just run this over there we go and I think I'll still be getting more than enough petroleum to be able to fund this okay so this makes solid fuel um, if you look at coal, you'll see that it has a fuel value of four megajoules. So that means each each piece of coal will give four megajoules of energy. Wood, for example, gives two megajoules of energy. So coal is twice as dense in terms of energy as wood is. Um, solid fuel gives 12 megajoules of energy. So every piece of solid fuel is equivalent in energy to three pieces of coal. Um, and then you'll also see there, if you use it in a vehicle, it increases the acceleration and the top speed of your vehicle versus coal and wood, which just give default uh, acceleration and top speed. Okay, now these come out uh, one every two seconds. So we'll use 
couple of yellow belts. Uh, let's see here. And we can use we can use solid fuel almost everywhere that you can use coal, except in well almost anywhere you use coal as a fuel source. Okay. Now over here, for example, we're using coal to make explosives. You can't use you you can only use coal in recipes. Um, but for anything that burns coal as fuel, you can replace it with solid fuel. So what I would like to do is run this solid fuel line down to my power plant. Um, and we can set it up so that we use that preferentially to the coal. Probably going to need more belts. Yeah, so let's run it down. Yeah, we'll just come down this way. Let me grab some more belts. Get more undergrounds and let's grab more splitters. Now we got tons of ingredients. How are we doing on power, by the way? Yeah, we're still only using about half of our production capacity, so we're doing fine. No reason to be concerned yet. I do really want to find another coal patch, though, as soon as possible. Okay. Um. It's going to get a little bit spaghetti-ish here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this splitter back here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want solid fuel to mix in with this line that's going to be used for recipes. Okay, this coal's going to make grenades, it's going to make the explosives and so forth. Okay. And then I'll put that there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set input priority on this splitter for the belt that has the solid fuel. And what that'll do is that as long as solid fuel is available, it'll, it'll run it down this belt. But if solid fuel is not available for whatever reason, then it'll allow the coal to feed through. So eventually all the coal will get used off this belt and then when these things run out of fuel, they'll pick up a piece of solid fuel because that'll be the only other fuel that's available. But they will use the coal first because that's what's already in the machines and they'll, uh, they'll use that up before they start using anything different. Okay, so it'll take a while but eventually these will all switch over to, um, to using solid fuel. And that's a good way to conserve coal in this case. The nice thing about oil is that oil lasts forever. Um, these oil patches, over time, uh, as, you, as you pump more and more out of the ground, the yield will decrease over time. So, you know, right now, for example, this one is giving me 19.9 .9 crude oil per second. Over time, that will gradually decrease, 
but the minimum, I, th I think the minimum amount that you'll ever get out is, I want to say it's 10% of the initial value, right? So this one that, well, I'm not sure what it started at, but this one, for example, it's got a yield of 249%. Um, it'll eventually go down to 24.9%. Um, but it'll never go any lower. So you can you can you can essentially pump oil forever. It's just that the yield will decrease over time, and then once it reaches that minimum level, it'll stay there. And then you can you can throw in speed modules and do stuff like that to to make it go faster and increase your output. Okay, uh, so it looks like we got rocket launcher research. I'm just going to continue to queue up whatever I can do, which is anything that's got red, green, and or military in it. And eventually we'll reach a point where we won't be able to do any more research until we have the next set of science packs available. Okay, but for now, um, like I said, we have, we're going to have blue inserters later, or blue belts. So I'm going to reserve space for those right here. That's going to be for our blue stuff. Because, as you might have guessed, that's going to use red belts as ingredients. Um, and that's, that's really a good thing because at some point we're going to start replacing most of the yellow belts with red belts. And then we can bring the yellow belts back here to be used as ingredients, so they get recycled. It's not, you know, it's not a waste to build lots of, of pardon me, to build lots of yellow belts. Okay, so next I want to do inserters. Okay, so let's look at our array of inserters. Burner inserters, I'm not going to make. We're really not going to use those anymore. Um, or if we do, you know, for more power plants. Um, we can always just handcraft a bunch. There's no need to automate those, really. Um, yellow inserters, of course, uh, we'll always need. Um, red inserters take yellow inserters, and blue inserters take yellow inserters. So once again, it'll make sense to put yellow inserters in the middle. And then we can have reds on this side and blues on this side. Um, Filter inserters, I don't use terribly often, so I'm fine with just handcrafting filter inserters when I do need them. Um, stack inserters, I will want to automate, and those take blue inserters as an ingredient. So we'll set this up for stack inserters. Um, but those need red circuits, so we can't start making those yet, but we'll, we'll reserve a spot for them. Okay. So we'll put some chests there for the outputs. We'll need to extend the gear belts. Oh, and here again, we'll do uh, we'll do a little underground belt there, so that we can feed these with yellow. And then we need iron plates. We need iron plates. We need iron plates. Okay, so let's feed all of these with iron plate. Oops. And then this one will need green circuits. <clears throat> but since nothing else on this row needs green circuits, I'll just throw in a, a long inserter there. All right, and then uh, this one, of course, needs gears. And this one needs gears as well. This one does not. Okay. So let's power it up. Let's throw in a couple of lights. I think we were doing like that, like that, and then we just put in our outputs. Oh, and let's not forget about the iron plates. Oh. 
Yeah, those need green circuits too. Whoops. Okay. Yellows, I'll limit to, let's say, four stacks, and then I'll do two stacks of reds and blues. Okay. See, and life is starting to get easier already. What else would we like to make? Well, um, assembly machines would be good, so let's make those. Uh, for those, we're going to need assembly machine ones and assembly machine twos. Okay, so let's do the ones here, and we'll do the twos there. Now, the ones I'm not really I'm not going to use for anything other than making the twos, so I'm not going to put those into a chest. The twos I will, however. And for those, we're also going to need some steel. So what I'll do next, I'm going to do something like this. I'll bring up a combined belt of steel and copper. Let's copy that. Uh, hmm. What was this for? Well, nothing yet. I'll have to put it here. And then we'll just feed it over. Okay, so we need steel right there. Let's just do this. All right, so the steel's gonna get in the way <laughs> of iron and copper, so we'll just have to jump over it when the time comes. Okay, so this fella needs Iron, gears, and steel, and green circuits. Whoops. So we'll need to run some green circuits over there. And for the plate, from there. Okay. And then this needs the same thing plus the steel. Okay, so in this case, let's pull the gears from the other side. And pull in the green circuits. And then we have to get some steel plate over there. Hmm. All right. Sometimes you have to get a little creative with your uh, with your belts to get everything where you want it. Okay. 
Okay. And then we'll limit that to two stacks. Okay, things are going great now. The amount of hand crafting that I'm going to have to do is going to be steadily diminishing. Okay, what else? Power poles would be nice. Copper, steel, and iron sticks. Copper, steel, and iron sticks. All right. So let's do this. So this will be where we make the iron sticks. And then we'll make the medium poles there and we'll make the big poles there. Inserter, long inserter, and then we just need some iron for this guy. And I'll bring it from both sides just to kind of keep our consumption balanced. Usually just do two stacks of those. Um, yeah. Outputs. There we go. Okay. Um, let's make lights. Lights take iron plates, copper cable, and electronic circuits. So I could do lights here. My copper's over there. I guess we'll do a copper cable here in the middle. case I'll just grab the electronic circuits from over there. Oops, we'll put that there. two stacks as well. Now there's other stuff that takes copper cables, namely um, these circuit wires and combinators. Four more items. One, two, 
Yeah. Well, I'll figure those out later. I don't think there's anything else that needs copper cables that I'm going to be producing in mass quantities right now. Okay, so we'll leave it like that. All right, so that's how you set up a mall, and then you just keep going. Now, you know, this thing obviously can grow <laughs> very large. Um, the thing is, once you make it that big, then you're going to have trouble feeding enough ingredients down these belts on the side to keep everything running. Um, so I'm of the opinion that you probably don't want to make your mall terribly large. Otherwise, it'll just become a real headache to keep it fed. Um, it might be better to make a couple of smaller ones, for example. And then later on, you can we can put the outputs into, um, into logistics chests that the robots can access, and then you can get it set up to where robots will just bring everything to you that you want to have in your permanent inventory. Um, and that way, once you get to that point, then having the production of these items, you know, spread out into various spots around the base becomes less of an issue because you're not going to actually have to go and pick them up yourself. The bots will bring them to you. So um, that's kind of ultimately what we'll be trying to achieve. But um, I think this is a very good start. Um, you know what? We should make mining drills. Plates, gears, and circuits. Plates, gears, and circuits. Okay, so let's run our line of gears. Whoops, I messed up. There we go. Um, yeah, then I'm gonna put that on this side. take two seconds to craft so I can output with a yellow inserter but I'll use blue inserters on the inputs there we go and I'll limit that to two stacks to start with Okay, and the reason I want those mining drills is because I want to tap into this iron patch here and belt the ore over to my smelters. Or I could tap into this one instead. It's not as big, but it'll be easier to get the belts there. Because this one will have to come down over and then weave my way through all this stuff to get around to the other side. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I'll tap into this one instead. Um, and then once we have robotics, we can, we can mine this one and use bots to move the ore so that we don't have to run the belts. Although I could, I could run the belts to the north and then over the top of this pond here and then down. That would work. It is a much bigger patch, and it's close to the rest of my production, so that probably makes sense, to be honest. I'll do that. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just work on that in between episodes, and uh, I'll show you the result next time. All right, 
Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.